Hi, welcome to this called Maz video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the converting between top heavy fractions and mixed numbers practice questions. If you need any extra help with your top heavy fractions or mixed numbers, if you go to Corp Maths and go down to the videos and worksheets section and scroll down to video number 139 and 140, there the dedicated video tutorials on top heavy fractions and mixed numbers and how to convert between them. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. So first question says write the missing number in the box so we've got the seven thirds equals blank and one third so we've got our top heavy fraction with the numerator bigger than the denominator and we've got our mixed number here where we've got our whole number and then the fraction and we want to figure out what the whole number is so we've got seven thirds well if you have three thirds that's a whole if you've got another three thirds that's another whole that's six thirds altogether and then you've got one more left over so that means that's two holes, we'd have two holes, and then one third left over. So it's going to be two and one third. Or another way to think about it is, remember the lemmings divided by, so we're saying what seven divided by three, well that would be two remainder one, so we'd have two and one third. And that's it, so the missing number is two. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number two. So question number two says, write the missing number in the box. So we've got our top heavy fraction, and we've got our mixed number. And we've got the nine fifths equals one, and so many fifths. Well, if you think about it in terms of fifths, five fifths is a whole. So that's five fifths, a whole. And then we'd have four more fifths left over. So it's going to be one and four fifths. And that's it. Or another way to think about it is if we had nine divided by five, that would be one remainder four. So it's one and four fifths. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number three. So question number three this time, we've got our top heavy fraction, blank over four, is equal to two and a quarter. So here we're dealing with quarters, and if we had two holes, well, in a hole, there's four quarters. So in two holes, it'd be eight quarters. And then we've got another one, so it would be nine quarters. So the missing number there is nine, because nine quarters is two and a quarter. Or another way to do that is to take the whole number, the two, times it by four, that's eight, and then add one would be nine. So that's nine quarters, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number four. So question number four says, match up the equivalent mixed numbers and improper fractions. So here we've got our improper fractions or our top heavy fractions here, and we've got our mixed numbers below, and we need to match up the equivalent ones. So first of all, if we have a look here, we've got the denominators of four here and here. So they're gonna match up with this one and this one, and then the top heavy fractions or improper fractions with fives in the denominators, they're gonna match up with these two. But we need to figure out which way around it's gonna go. So let's start off with five quarters. Five quarters, well, how many fours go into five? That's gonna be one, remainder one. So it's gonna be one and one quarter. So that would be that one. That was quite nice. That was quite straightforward. Okay, next, 11 quarters. But it's gonna to have to match up with this one. And let's just check how many fours go into 11. That would be two, because that's it. So two, remainder three. So it's gonna be two and three quarters. So it's gonna be that one. Okay, next, eight fifths. Well, how many fives go into eight? That's gonna be one, remainder three. So it's gonna be one and three fifths. So it's gonna be that one. Okay, and then finally, 12 fifths. Well, how many fives go into 12? That's gonna be two, remainder two. So it's gonna be two and two fifths. So it's gonna be two and two fifths. So it's gonna match up with this one. And that's it. So we've matched up all the equivalent mixed numbers and improper fractions, or top of every fractions. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next one, question number five. Okay, so question number five says, write five over two, this top heavy fraction, as a mixed number. So you want to write this top heavy fraction as a mixed number. Well, to do that, I'm going to say, how many twos go into five? Well, that'd be two, four, so it's going to be two twos go into five, so two. And then we'd have a remainder of one, so it's going to be one on the numerator, and then we've still got our two on the denominator. So that'll be two and a half. So five over two is two and a half. Okay, next, question number six. Question number six says, write 21 fifths as a mixed number. So how many fives go into 21? That's gonna be four, so it's gonna be four. And then the remainder is one, so it's gonna be one fifth. So the answer would be four and one fifth. Okay, next, question number seven. So question number seven says, write 10 sevenths as a mixed number. Well, how many sevens go into 10? That's gonna be one. The remainder would be three, so it's gonna be three sevenths. So our answer would be one and three sevenths. And again, we could check that if we had a whole, that's seven sevenths, and another three sevenths would be 10 sevenths. Okay, next, question number eight. So question number eight says, right, 11 thirds is a mixed number. So how many threes go into 11? Three, six, nine, that's gonna be three. And then that's nine, so the remainder's two, so it's gonna be three and two thirds. Okay, next, question number nine. Question number nine says, right, 19 tenths is a mixed number. So how many tens go into 19? That'll be one. And then we had nine left over, so it's gonna be nine tenths. So it's gonna be one and nine tenths. So 19 tenths is a mixed number, would be one and nine tenths, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 10. 
Okay, so question number 10 says, write the number four and two thirds in figures as a mixed number. So we need to write four and two thirds in figures as a mixed number. Well, as a mixed number, four and two thirds, that's gonna be four and then two thirds. And that's a mixed number, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 11. So question number 11 says, write the number 2.5 as a mixed number. So we wanna write 2.5 as a mixed number. So that means we're gonna write that whole number, that one or two or three or something, and then a fraction. Now, because it's 2.5, it's gonna obviously begin with a two. And then we've got 0.5. And remember the 0.5 or 0 0.5 is a half. So it's gonna be two and a half. So that means that 2.5 as a mixed number will be two and a half. Okay, next, question number 12. So question number 12 says, write the number 3.75 as a mixed number. So again, the whole number part is gonna be three. And then we've got 0 0.75, which is 0 0.75. Remember the 0 0.75 is equal to three quarters. And you should remember that off by heart. So three quarters is 0 0.75. So this would be three and three quarters. So three and three quarters. Okay, next, question number 13. Okay, question number 13 says, write the number 5.4 as a mixed number. So we know it's gonna be five, and then in terms of the 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 is two fifths. And you might remember that because a fifth is 0 0.2, so two fifths would be 0 0.4. Or another way to think about it is if you have 0 0.4, that's four tenths, so that's four tenths, and then you could cancel down the four tenths, and four tenths would cancel down to two fifths. So that's gonna be five and two fifths. So 5.4 is five and two fifths. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14, we've been asked to write 103 over 15 as a mixed number. And this is a calculator question. That's very important you know how to convert between top heavy fractions and mixed numbers on your calculator because you may encounter each of them and you may need to be able to convert between each of them. Or your calculator may give an answer as a top heavy fraction, but you may want it as a mixed number and so on. Okay, so I'm going to go through that now. So let's type our fraction, our 103 fifteenths into the calculator. So I'm going to press the fraction button, which is this button here. So press the button there, that fraction button, and type in 103 on the numerator, and then press down, and then type in 15 on the denominator. And then I'm going to press EXE, so it comes up there on my display. And I want to write that as a mixed number. So I want that as a mixed number. So I'm going to press here the format button. And as you can see, we've got some different formats. We could get it to display as a decimal, an improper fraction, or as a mixed number. So I'm going to go down to mixed fraction here, mixed number, mixed fraction, and then press EXE. And as you can see, we've got 6 and 13 fifteenths. So we've taken this top heavy fraction, this improper fraction, or this top heavy fraction, we've typed it into the calculator, and then we've got it to display as a mixed number, like so, and that's it. If you happen to have a calculator like this and you wanna type in that 103 fifteenths and get it to display as a mixed number, again, we'll type in our fraction, so we'll press the fraction button there, and type in 103 on the numerator, and then type in 15 on the denominator, like so. And then we'll press equals, and it'll come up as our top heavy fraction, 103 over 15. Now we wanna get it to display as a mixed number so here above this little SD button in yellow here we can see we've got here a mixed number and a fraction top of a fraction and so if you press shift so press shift here and then the SD button here it'll convert it to a mixed number like so and if you wanted to get it to convert back you can just press shift and then that button again and it can convert back and forth between those top of fractions and mixed numbers and that's it okay so as we've just seen the answer is 6 and 13 fifteenths and that's it Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 15. Okay, so question number 15 says to write one and two thirds as a top heavy fraction. So we wanna write this mixed number as a top heavy fraction. Now we're dealing with thirds here. So if we've got a whole, that's three thirds, and then we've got another two thirds, so all together we would have five thirds, and that's it. Or a way sometimes some students think about it is, and if you take this number here, one, and you times by three, you get three, and then if you add on the numerator, that's five, so it's gonna be five thirds, and that's it. Okay, next, question number 16. Question number 16 says to write two and a half as a top heavy fraction. So again, we're gonna take our two, we'll times it by the two on the denominator, two times two is four, and add on another one will be five. So it's gonna be five halves, so it's five halves. Or another way to think about it is if you're dealing with halves, in two you've got that all together, that'd be four halves, and another half would be five halves, so it's five halves. Okay, next, question number 17. So question number 17 says to write five and three fifths as a top heavy fraction. So again, if we take our five and times it by the number of the denominator, so five times five is 25, so that's 25 fifths, and another three fifths would be 28 fifths. And that's it. A way to check that is if you've got five holes and you're dealing with fifths, you're gonna have 25 fifths altogether. That's why we're timesing there. And then you've got another three, so it's gonna be 28 fifths. Okay, next, question number 18. Question number 18, we've been asked to write seven and four ninths as a top of every fraction. 
So 7 times 9 is 63, plus 4 would be 67. So it's going to be 67 over 9. So 67 ninths. And that's it. So 7 and 4 ninths is the top of your fraction would be 67 ninths. And that's it. Also remember, another way to think about it is if you've got seven holes and you cut them into ninths, so altogether you'd have 63 ninths, and then number four would be 67 ninths. Okay, question number 19. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 19. So question number 19 says, here are five number cards, and we've got three, five, seven, 16, and 23. And we've been asked to use the number cards to make an improper fraction between two and three. So we want to make an improper fraction between two and three. So we want to make a top of every fraction that's between two and three. Now what we could do is, well, for instance, we could try five thirds, and if we try five thirds, let's see what we get. So how many threes go into five? That's one, so it's one. Already I know that that's wrong because it's not going to be between two and three. Um, the remainder would be two and then the denominator would be three. So that's one and two thirds. So again, that's not between two and three. Okay, next, let's then try seven thirds. Seven thirds. And then we say how many threes go into seven? That's two. This is good. And then the remainder is one. So one third. So that's two and one third. And that's between two and three. So that would work. Seven thirds. And there may be some other answers. Let's have a look. So we want fractions, we want improper fractions between two and three. So 16 thirds, that's not going to work. So we've dealt with the ones with three on the denominator. Let's try five. Seven over five would be one and two fifths. That wouldn't work. 16 over five would be three and one fifth. So that's not going to work. And then that wouldn't work. Okay, next, 16 over seven, 16 sevens. Actually, 16 sevens. How many sevens go into 16? Two. This is good. Remainder two over seven. So that would work as well. 16 sevens would be another possible answer. 16 sevens. I'm going to write over there. Um, okay, uh, okay, next, let's try 23 over 7. Well, no, that's not going to work because 3 times 7 is 21. And that's going to be too big. So that's going to be 3 and something. So that's not going to work. And then the last one, though, that wouldn't work either. So in terms of answers here, the answers would be either 7 over 3 or 16 over 7. And they would both be improper fractions that give you a value between 2 and 3. Okay, and then part B. Part B, we've been asked to use the cards to make an improper fraction between 4 and 5. So let's go back and think of some of the answers we had here. Actually, if we wrote them all down, that would have been quite handy. Um, so we had here 5 thirds, 7 thirds. Let's try 16 thirds. So 16 thirds. How many threes go into 16? That's going to be 5. It's 15. Remainder 1 and over 3. And we want between 4 and 5, so that's not going to work. And 23 over 3 is not going to work either. But that would be how many 3 is going to 23? That's going to be 7 remainder 2. So that's not going to work either. So we've tried all of the fractions with 3 on the denominator. Now let's try the improper fractions with 5 on the denominator. I'm just doing all of them here so we can see which ones would work. Obviously in an exam you may not want to try all of them. So here with 5 on the denominator, 7 over 5 would be equal to how many 5 is going to 7? That's 1 remainder 2. So 1 and 2 fifths, that's not going to work. Work. Okay, next, 16 over 5, 16 over 5. How many 5s go into 16? That's 3, that's 15, so it's 3 and 1 fifth left over. So that's not going to work either. And then 23 over 5, let's try that, 23 over 5. How many 5s go into 23? 4, that's 20, remainder 3 over 5. So that will work, 23 over 5. That's going to be a possible answer, 23 over 5. That's equal to 4 and 3 fifths, and that's in between 4 and 5. So that's fantastic. Let's just see if there's any more. So we've tried all of the top of three fractions with 5 on the denominator. We've got our 7 over 5, 16 over 5, and 23 over 5. We've tried 16 sevenths. That's 2 and 2 sevenths. Let's try 23 over 7. 23 over 7. How many sevens go into 23? That's going to be 21. That's 3 remainder 2 over 7. And then finally, 23 over 16 will be equal to 1 16 goes into 23 remainder remainder 7 over 16. Okay, so we've got all of them there. I, I couldn't find any others that worked in between 4 and 5, unless I've missed one, but the answer that I'm going to choose is 23 over 5. Part C, we've been asked to use the cards to make an improper fraction between 3 and 4. So by doing them all, we can now find the ones between 3 and 4. There's one that would work between 3 and 4. 23 over 7, let's write that down. 23 over 7, 23 over 7. That's in between 3 and 4. That was equal to 3 and 2 7, so that works. Fantastic. 3 and 4, this would work as well. 16 over 5, 16 over 5 would work as well. 16 over over five um and are there any more between three and four i can't spot any more so that will do and that's it so we've had a look at question number 19. okay next let's have a look at question number 20. so question number 20 is a calculator question and we need to write 9.35 as the top of every fraction so my calculator i'm just going to type in 9.35 and press equals and my calculator straight away tells me the answer is 187 
over 20 whenever I press equals. So you can just type in that decimal, 9.35, and press equals, and it tells you the answer. I'm just going to check another model of calculator here, 9.35, press equals, and I've got that's equal to 187 over 20. And it's cancelled down as well, so that's fantastic. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 21. So question number 21 says, Jasper feeds his dog two thirds of a can of dog food each day. So obviously the dog doesn't eat a whole can of dog food. Perhaps the dog food cans are quite big and the dog doesn't want to eat a whole can or maybe it's a small dog. I'm not entirely sure why he doesn't get a full can, but that's what it is. He gets two thirds of a can of dog food every day. And then we're asked to work out how much dog food is eaten each week and to give our answer as a mixed number. Now, there's a few different ways we could approach this. One approach is to consider whether the dog is given two thirds of a can of dog food each day. So we could take two thirds for perhaps Monday and then plus Tuesday and then plus Wednesday and plus Thursday plus Friday plus Saturday plus Sunday. And here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that means we've got seven lots of two thirds. And uh, because obviously every day the dog eats two thirds of a can of dog food. And if we do two thirds plus 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 two thirds, we're going to add those all up. And remember, whenever we're adding fractions of the same denominator, we just add the numerator. So we've got so many thirds. So we would have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen thirds. We'd have fourteen thirds. So that means that the dog eats 14 thirds of a can of dog food each week. Now in terms of this context, in terms of 14 thirds, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Because if I wanted to go into the shop and buy 14 thirds of a can of dog food, if I asked a member of staff for that, they'd probably look at me a bit confused. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this top heavy fraction into a mixed number. So to do that, let's take our 14 thirds, 14 thirds. And we'll say how many threes go into 14. So it's going to be 3, 6, 9, 12. That's 4. Remainder 2. So that makes a bit more sense. Four and two thirds of a can to four and so four and two thirds of a can of dog food each week. So four and two thirds cans. And that's it. That's how much dog food is eaten each week by the dog. Now I did say there's a few different approaches because one approach is to add up the fractions like that. Another approach is to take this two thirds and to just times it by seven. And seven lots of two thirds is equal to 14 thirds because seven lots of two thirds would be 14 thirds. And then again, we would change that into a mixed number because 14 thirds of a can doesn't make much sense. And also the question said to change it. And we've got an answer of four and two thirds of a can of dog food each week. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our last question, question number 22. So question number 22, we've got this square and we've got this length of the side of the square is five eighths of a meter. So this is a square and obviously each side has got the same length. So if that length of that side is equal to five eighths of a meter, this side would be five eighths of a meter. This side would have a length of five eighths of a meter and this side would have a length of five eighths of a meter. And we've been asked to calculate the perimeter. So that means we need to add up the distances around the outside. So we're going to do five eighths plus five eighths plus five eighths plus five eighths and we'll see what we get so five eighths and remember whenever we're adding fractions of the same denominator the denominator just stays the same so we've got five eighths ten eighths fifteen eighths twenty eighths so that means the perimeter of the shape is twenty eighths meters we've been asked to give our answer as a mixed number because again 20 eighths meters if i had that i probably would think well what does that mean so let's change it to a mixed number so how many if we had 20 eighths i'm actually going to cancel down to begin with if we had 20 eighths we could half both of those to get 10 quarters and if we have that again we get five halves okay that's going to be a bit easier to change into a mixed number so 20 eighths cancels down to five over two meters and then if we take our five over two how many twos go into five that would be two remainder one. So two and a half meters. So the perimeter of that square is two and a half meters. And that's it. I do want to also mention here, whenever we had 20 over eight, we had 20 over eight. You could just change that into a mixed number to begin with and say how many eights go into 20. That's two remainder four and then still over eight and you get two and four eighths and then the four eighths would cancel down that'd be two and then you can write two quarters or you could go straight to the one half two and a half meters and that's it so the perimeter of that square is two and a half meters and that's as a mixed number and that's it and that's it so in this video we've looked at how to convert between top heavy fractions and mixed numbers if you need any extra help on this topic, if we go to the videos and worksheets section on Corporate Maths and scroll down to video numbers 139 and 140, those video tutorials will help you. Alternatively, you can scan this QR code. But in this video, we're focused on the video solutions to the practice questions. I really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.